first Ivy League contest, road or home, since March 7, 2020 at Princeton, a span of 666 days. Tip is won by the visitors. They will uh, be without the services of their senior guard, Taurus Samuels. He's been replaced in the starting lineup by uh, Wes Slacker, number 11. And defensively, the first miss of the game, Red will come down right to left on your ESPN Plus viewing screen, their first trip into the front court. No changes for Cornell from the Syracuse game. Jordan Jones again will miss this game. Their outstanding junior forward, as will the freshman guard, Nazir Williams. Those are two notable misses. 15 combined players between the two clubs will not play today as Manning misses his first shot attempt. Slackert to bring it down into the front court for the green. Their second trip up top, Nate Ogbu. Off to the dribbler, Garrison Wade. Senior who is making his fifth start in a green uniform. The dribble handoff to Slackert. Shot clock winding down to 10 seconds. Little step back from the baseline. Jumper missed by Wade. Ball is tipped around inside. And Sarju Patel, one of three Cornell Tri captains, will bring it down into the front court. And they'll throw it into the block. Kobe Dixon for the post up move. Goes up, gets fouled by Nate Ogbu. And the first free throw attempts of the Ivy League home season for Kobe Dixon. Senior try captain Eric will take a look at the replay. Had terrific post position. And Kobe with a breakout senior season in progress. Yeah, he has. Absolutely a breakout senior season. You'll see at least on that possession, Dartmouth not doubling the post. So one of the problems for, uh, for Dartmouth is he doubled the post. You're going to leave a good three-point shooter open. So at least off initially, they're going to allow Kobe Dixon to go one-on-one -on -one with Ogbu. Dixon hits 62% of his charity tosses. This is 48th game in a Cornell uniform, his 17th start. One out of two. Cornell as a team shoots 67% from the free throw line. Dartmouth a very robust 75%, but they don't go to the free throw line a lot. Majority of their shots come from the outside. one nothing Cornell, 90 seconds in of this 2022 Ivy League opener, the penetration for Barry, the kick out up top. A monster throwdown for Garrison Wade, the senior from Madison, Mississippi, gets on the board. And Chris <laughs> Manning says, you know what? I will try to one-up you at the right baseline, but that ball sails high and over the rim out of bounds. But back to Garrison Wade at 6'6" elevating that he was 7-6. Yeah, taking advantage. This is his fifth start of the uh, of the season played in uh, now 12 games. This is a fantastic strong move to set an early tone for Dartmouth. Barry denied by Manning. Right side to Slackert on a bounce up top. Ogbu push it off to Barry. He has not shot the ball well against Cornell historically. Interesting story behind him. He is a graduate student now at Dartmouth. The ball is deflected at the baseline. Lost out of bounds. Last touch by Cornell. Brendan Barry two years ago set out the season at Dartmouth. Was a graduate student walk on at Temple last year and now because of the Ivy League graduate student rule for one year is now back for his fifth season. Okay. And he's fourth in a Dartmouth uniform. If you keep track of all that, Captain. Uh, you know, I'm doing my best, but thankfully for, for you, I, and uh, for me and all the viewers, you've, uh, you've got it well in hand. Prolific three-point shooter. Speaking of shooters, Dean No, who comes into the game, gets the first basket of the game for Cornell other than the free throw, and a 4-2 Cornell advantage. Barry? Clearing out on the dribble. As a sophomore and a junior, he led the Ivy League in both assist to turnover ratio. Aaron Rye, left side of the floor. He's been a Cornell killer in the sweep against the Big Red two years ago as Slackert will stop popping this. Rebound, Boothby. Out to Isaiah Gray, who just checked into the game for Cornell. Sarju Patel barely nicked the rim on the three-point shot attempt. And Slackert to speed down into the front court. Just over three minutes in from Ithaca, 4-2 Cornell lead over the Dartmouth Green. 221st all-time meeting and a turnover against Agabu out of bounds. Substitution for the Green, Cam Kristowiak, a junior from San Diego. And yes, Eric, he is the son of former NBA player Larry Kristowiak. He is on the floor, number 24, the valuable six-man for the Green. 
Sean Mann in number 20, the sophomore in for Cornell is Dean Knowles swooping to the right side, shot is off. Aaron Rye with the rebound, comes down into the front court, kicks it to the baseline. There's Barry Bang, three pointer. Seventh in Division One at 44% of his makes, he gets into the book and a 5 4 lead for the Green as the Reds throw it into the block. Manning backing in, backing in, the hook rolls around and down for Sean Hansen, the 6'9 sophomore from Ramsey, Texas. Back and forth we go, it's a 6 5 Cornell lead. As Barry will do a little bit of everything for the green. Gets it up top to Kristoyak. Sends it left to right. Works inside the middle. Puts up a runner off the back iron. No. Fouls up his offensive rebound and puts it off glass. Aaron Rye. Senior from Markham, Ontario in Canada. Eric, back and forth we go. It's a 7-6 lead for the visitors. Uh, it is. It's uh, you know very typical of the Cornell games this season. Up and down. Uh, I get to uh, enjoy the games more than I have to commentate because the action is so uh, coming so rapidly. Lead back to the home club. Isaiah Gray, sophomore from New York. Here's a steal into the front court as Sarju Patel hits the floor. Tom this is the first official game of the Ivy League season, head-to-head -head play. We mentioned at the top of the telecast, two games already canceled due to COVID. Brown and Penn will tip at 3 o'clock. We'll get you updates throughout this one. Both teams, Eric, shooting 42%. Max Sandberg into the game for Cornell. The uh, senior from Rye, New York, his first appearance. And Evan Williams on the floor as Greg Dolan. The third try captain for the Big Red hits a jumper just right of the foul circle. So a 10-7 lead this is the largest of the game for either club. As Dartmouth will work it down into the front court. Both teams are going to go a bit deeper into their rosters. Speaking of deeper, Isaiah Robinson, a 6'3 sophomore guard, will pull up from the foul line jumper. No, and Sandberg clears the glass for the Big Red. Both teams get back respectively on both defense and offense as Gray will drive the ball into the paint. Muscle the shot off the back rim and down. Two strong drives for the sophomore guard from Brooklyn, Isaiah Gray, and a five-point big red advantage. Yeah, great takes by Isaiah Gray. You see, he uses his strength, his physicality. He loves to take it to the hoop, and you saw it right there. Cornell's bench averages 43 points a game. That could be a factor as we get into the second half. Rice skids to the foul line. Up top it goes. Barry will shoot off the rim. And a heads-up play by Max Sandberg. Boxing out the other number 24 on the floor. Cam Kristoyak cannot run the ball down. We're going to see multiple changes for both clubs as the Reds quickly get down into the front court. Evan Williams, first time we've called his name, a 6'7 sophomore from Texas. is Red missed a right side shot. And Barry to control for the green. Two corner players come to the score table. Beautiful back pass to Rye, head of the circle, 3 0. Scrum for the loose ball on the floor. Romeo Merthel, who checked into the game, a freshman from Sweden, got tied up on the alternate arrow. Possession back to Cornell. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of mix and match by the respective clubs this afternoon. As we've joked throughout the season, it's apropos today. It's almost like a hockey game. Uh, it's almost like we're over at Liner Rink. The number of substitutions, particularly coming from Cornell, uh, are, are you know, it's very fast-paced for sure. It's been a big edge for Cornell thus far this season. They've been able to play a lot of guys. They'll pick up in full-court pressure. And even the losses that they have, they aren't as impactful because they have such a well-balanced team. Chris Manning gets into the scorebook. A beautiful pivot, spin, and right side layup. Yeah, Mann is one of the more athletic players for, for Cornell. Not shooting the ball great from beyond the arc, but very good taking it to the hoop. You saw almost a thunderous dunk before and a very nice play, both offensively and almost to seal their defense. Mann doing a great job defensively against Dartmouth. Kostoyak skip. Up top it goes. Merkel stripped by Manning. Comes down two on two, releases the Patel, drives in the left under pressure, missed the shot. Defensive pressure applied by Garrison Wade. He'll fire the ball down into the front court, catching it as Barry. Squares up on the right elbow. Crossover, jumper, missed after hitting his first three. He's missed his last three shots. 
Patel in transition, hit the rim, no. Rebound inside for Stoliak, but there's gonna be a loose ball foul against the green. That'll stop the game clock, 7.40 in, and Cornell with a double up on the scoreboard at 14 to seven. And they, one of the things Cornell's done is they haven't let Brian Barry really get loose all that much. He gets a, a three in the corner, uh, but Chris Manning did a great job defensively last time. That's gonna be a key. I would say Cornell's best on-ball guard defender uh, is Nazir Williams, who's out for today's game. Dean Noll back in the ball game, as is uh, Kobe Dixon, the two seniors. And Dartmouth quickly picking up the team fouls. Chris Stoliak, who came in as the sixth man, will have to go to the bench with the two early fouls. Fourth team foul overall against Dartmouth. And we've played just over 12 minutes. Rettle set up in the half court, backing into the post as Dixon up and under moves, shoots it under pressure, no. Offensive rebound, yes, Sarju Patel went left, went right, and laid it in. I think his defender thought he was gonna pass the ball out, Eric, little head and shoulders fake, and a right side lay-in. Yeah, very well disguised. It looked like Sarju was trying to get that ball back out to the perimeter. Defensive player takes a break for a half a second. Basket for Cornell. Dame Adelikun, number 32, his first appearance is on the floor as Slackert gets hedged out way outside by Dixon. Back into Adelikon to the baseline. It goes, same shot that he hit to start the ball game. Yeah. Count it for Brendan Barry. That's what Dartmouth needs to get him open looks on the perimeter. Yeah, Speaking Cornell of the perimeter, Manning missed on the shot. Get you in in just a second, Captain, as Slackert gets the rebound. Speeds down into the front court. Double team, kick it to the corner. Stopping, popping, missing his way. Another rebound. Team no foul on the floor. Fifth. Big deal tonight, even a bigger deal uh, with all the players uh, out for, for both teams, uh, inclusive of, of Dartmouth. So something to watch as, uh, as this game progresses. Cornell has yet to commit a turnover. Defensively, they forced four. Red shooting 43%, the green at 30 both teams, as expected, shooting a lot of threes, seven and six respectively for Cornell and Dartmouth. Dixon backing in with a little hook, short on the rim. Adelican grabs the rebound. This is going to be the first foul of the contest against Cornell, Isaiah Gray, the sophomore. The red with Gray, Noel, Patel, Boothby, and Dixon. That's the five on the floor. Reset Dartmouth in just a moment. Slackert moved into the starting lineup today due to the uh, nine different Dartmouth players who could not play, including their normal starter, Taurus Samuels. Slackert, crossover, can't penetrate Cornell zone. Barry does penetrate the zone with a strong right side drive. Point six and seven and eight for Brendan Barry as we have a horn sounding. Yeah, we have an issue with the... Uh, yeah, been uh, an interesting six years, uh, included of the you know, the, the COVID uh, type of, of seasons. I think both coaches have really started to put their stamps on their respective programs. A lot of similarities as you see the types of players, the types of, of strategies that are employed by both coaches. Dean Noll for Cornell, the senior guard with points four and five off the bench. Largest lead has been nine. It's seven right now for the home club as we approach the halfway point of this opening 20 minutes here at snowy Newman Arena here in Ithaca, New York. First Ivy League official game of the head-to-head -head season in the ancient eight. Red stop the penetration. Wade kick it left. Slackered fake. Shot will go. Knock it down. Three-pointer. Did not think his foot was in front of the line, foot on back of the line, but as we look up at the shot clock, Eric, it did say zero when he released the shot. Yeah. That, that is a huge, it's a potential six point play if it would have counted as a three and Cornell hits a three. Regardless, possession back to the red. Dixon with the bounce pass intended for Boothby. Kicked out of bounds, last touch by uh, Dartmouth. So the red will inbound from underneath, but potentially, anywhere from a five to six point turnaround with that three point called off due to the shot clock violation. Yeah, no doubt, especially as Dartmouth was starting to get some momentum there. Uh, we'll see if Cornell is able to, uh, to seize that good break. 
Null double team, Sandberg. Dixon has been played well in the post underneath to Gray. Ball is lost out of bounds. Officially, I believe that's the first turnover against Cornell. It comes with 9.15 and a half. And still a six point lead. Chris Mannon back into the lineup for Cornell. Isaiah Gray goes to the bench. Sean Hansen, number 20, checks back in for Cornell. He replaces Kobe Dixon. Approaching nine minutes in the opening half. Wade, who had that thunderous dunk earlier in the half to ignite an early green run. Rye, under pressure, muscles it up, and he'll get fouled. One of the more underrated players in the Ivy League, Aaron Rye. He's been in double figures 34 times in his career, but he got terrific post position off the drop step and got fouled going to the basket. Yeah, he uses his body well, uh, as you see. I mean, he's not, you know, by Division One basketball standards, not the biggest guy, probably around 6'5", but understands how to use, uh, use his body, get his shot off, pretty apt, uh, you know, as we talk about. Not a ton of guys getting to the line a lot for uh, uh, for Dartmouth, but he is uh, one of the three that's uh, closing in on, on 20 free throws for the, for the season. Speaking of threes, he's got three points after missing the first. Came in as a 77% shooter. Five-point Cornell lead. Sandberg. Hansen. Red. Averaging those 21 assists a game. Tops in Division I entering the weekend. is Noel with the shot clock under five seconds. Sandberg with the kick to the baseline. Williams will stop shooting. No. Great offensive rebound to Hanson. The kick out. No. He'll miss that one. Ball is jostled for inside. Brandon Berry jostles it away. And it's either Sandberg or Evan Williams who's going to be charged with the Cornell foul. Manning on the foul for the Big Red. Third team foul against Cornell. Just over eight to play. And a five-point lead continues to be for the home club. Is Rye playing a little point forward here, bringing it down into the front court. Normally, Barry is the distributor. Wade to Rye. Offensive foul, yes! Evan Williams, the Cornell sophomore forward, picking up the player control offensive foul, sacrificing his body. Yeah, great play by Evan Williams against Rye. You know, Rye uh, expected to be an, an all Ivy type uh, type performer this season. Uh, great use of his feet, just able to uh, establish position of hair, uh, hair before uh, Rye knocked into him. Subs continue for both teams. Greg Dolan back on the floor for Cornell. Under eight to go. Manning had a notion. Dolan looking for the entry pass. Hansen, did he use the window a bit too hard and strong rebound for Garrison Wade playing with the black headband. Steal by Manning, here comes Showtime. For Chris Mannon, that's just one of a regular assortment of dunks. <laughs> a traditional two-hand flush. Uh, it wasn't quite the showtime you had expected, but uh, you know, as we talk about, Mannon is uh, one of the best defenders for Cornell. I think that's at least the second steal uh, he's gotten in just this half. Dusan Neskovic on the other end, scoring for the green. We approach the seven-minute mark. Mannon again on a mini 4-0 run, a dunk, and now a left elbow jump shot for the sophomore from New Milford, New Jersey. Ogabu back into the ball game. They swing it around the perimeter. Manning playing tightly on Wade. The jump stop. Shot clock winding down. Red continue to extend their defense. Step back, three-point shot. Oh, counted for Garrison Wade. Step back, three, E, with the shot clock winding down. Yeah, Cornell uh, played about 28 seconds of, of great defense. Uh, not so great to, uh, to finish out that shot clock. Speaking of step backs, Dolan took it, missed it. Red get the offensive rebound. Man in straight away. Swish. 
So he's got a dunk, an elbow jumper, and now a head of the circle three ball. Yeah, that'll be the big question for him is his offensive career at Cornell developed. Can he be more consistent from beyond the arc? He's so athletic. He's so good at taking it to the hoop. Pretty good at the mid-range. Shooting in the high 20s right now from three-point land. And if he can get better from beyond the arc, it'll be impossible to guard. Terrific defense on uh, Dartmouth defensively by Cornell. The driving right side layup off the glass. Count that one for Greg Dolan. The tri-captain with four. And now the largest lead of the game is matched at nine as we get to the media time. Sophomore Chris Mannon with nine, and you talked about his prowess on the three-point shot. There was a foul prior to the timeout, not a shooting foul. Green will inbound from their offensive front court. Yeah, it's been a 7-3 run for uh, for Cornell over the last minute and a half here, uh, but that gets uh, stopped a little bit at least by, uh, by, uh, by Dartmouth there and Garrison Wade. So 15 of the 20 green points between Wade and Brendan Barry. Let's see if we have any changes for Cornell off the timeout. No, the freshman Guy Raglan Jr. got into the game prior to the last media timeout. Now off the ball, there's a player control offensive foul, and it's against the uh, senior Dean Knoll. Yeah, it is. It's going to be an illegal screen there by, by Dean Knoll, so not, uh, not exactly what Cornell wanted coming out of that media timeout. Fifth overall team foul against Cornell. Prior to the media timeout, Cornell was shooting 46% from the floor. The green at 41. Barry with the penetration. Up top wave. Shoots a 3-0. No. Rebound red. They want to run. Darmot scurries back defensively. Is Raglan Jr., number 21, who is a fearless three-point shooter off the bench. And now I believe... Different difficult choices. Uh, he's kept Kostowiak in the game with... Uh, with two, now he's on the bench with three. Rye, probably the second lead, well, definitely the second leading scorer, but arguably the, the second best player for Dartmouth. There with the ball, also have two fouls. Rye with the penetration, up and under, off the window, counted in a foul. Aaron Rye with points four and five on the afternoon. That was sweet. Split the pressure, had great sense of where he was at the basket, the hesitation, the up and under, Eric. Looking Eric Taylor-like during his <laughs> days at Cornell. A terrific one-on-two move for Aaron Rye. Uh, yeah, very fundamentally sound was exactly what uh, what I was thinking in my head as that uh, play developed. And that's what he brings to the table. He's not going to make a lot of mistakes. He's not super overly athletic, but he's a uh, very, very good Ivy League basketball player. Speaking of fearless, Guy Raglan Jr., the freshman from West Hartford, Connecticut, is a three-point bomber. We talk about Keller Boothby. Raglan comes off the bench with eyes ablaze and a shoot three-point shots. Yeah, particularly from the top of the arc, though. He hit him from the corners uh, in the game uh, last week against Syracuse. And Rye answers with a floater at the right baseline for the green. Redder trapped underneath the basket. Patel, double team, bounces it. It's turnover. And a turnover and a costly foul against Isaiah Gray in the back of the line will be Wade, who's been in double figures four times already this season, and has that monster dunk to open the Dartmouth game offensively. Yeah, Brendan and, uh, and Rye have definitely been the, uh, the leaders in terms of, of scoring. And then, you know, it was a big question mark. You know, the third and fourth uh, leading scorers, Samuels and, and Cornish, both out for this afternoon's game. Uh, so real credit to, uh, to Garrison Wade, who's uh, stepped up in a big way. Seven-point scorer already has nine points. And the official again. With a lot of the changes in the in graduations, uh, a, lot of, a lot of new faces, a lot of new experiences this afternoon. Changes off the timeout. Dixon back on the floor. And the ball is knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Dartmouth. Again, the largest deficit facing the green was nine. This run is cut it to two. And Cornell will inbound with 15 now on the shot clock. Done a nice job, too, on Boothby. He is yet to score for Cornell. Intended pass for Brutel. Taken away. Who else? Garrison Wade scoots down into the front court as the green will set up with their captain Barry. Right side ride back to Barry. Adelicun. 
Knocked out of bounds, last touch by Dartmouth. Alternating turnovers against both clubs as we approach three minutes to play in this opening half of Ivy League action on ESPN+. Plus. Another steal. This time, Barry with the swipe. Ahead it goes to Wade. Clutch off the backboard, no. Offensive rebound, yes. Dom Adelican, a 6'8 junior from Gastonia, North Carolina. He'll go up and get two shots. It's team foul number eight, but it was in the act of shooting. Two free throws, Eric Taylor. A nine-point deficit will be sliced to just one for visiting Dartmouth. Again, you've got to make that long bus trip for one game over the weekend from Hanover to Ithaca. Get in rather late and get ready to play on a Sunday afternoon. And the first of two goes down for Adelican. Yeah, it looks like a 7-3 to three run for, uh, for the Big Green over the last uh, minute and a half here. They continue to fight. It was one of those pieces a couple of minutes ago in, in game time where Cornell had a lot of the momentum. Dartmouth could have easily packed it in. But to their credit, they fought hard to, uh, to finish this uh, first half on a high note. Red get a shooter's bounce, by the way, as Sarju Patel. The shot went high in the air and dropped. So Patel with a much-needed three-pointer to stop a bit of that Dartmouth momentum as we're under three minutes to play in the first half. Green down four. Patient against Cornell zone. They're very conscious of Rye right now. Penetrates into the paint. Fires it inside, hang, catch, floater, count it for Dame Adelican. Rye on the assist, and Adelican with his first basket of the contest. Two-point game. Dartmouth, very aggressive and tenacious defensively. A little three-point attempt by Null in and out. And a leaping rebound to Garrison Wade. Two to tie, three to take the lead of the green as we're under two minutes to go in the first half. Rice penetration cut off. Fake at the baseline. Ball movement around the perimeter. Barry cut off. Wade penetration. Pick to the corner. Stopping, popping. Dropping a three-point shot is Isaiah Robinson. Three-pointer. Give Shooting from the outside, you said at the top of the telegraphs, they are a very perimeter-oriented team. Both teams rely heavily on the perimeter shooting. It's starting to drop now for Dartmouth. It, it, it is. Uh, you know, 40% now for Dartmouth, 4 for 10 uh, from beyond the arc, including uh, that last three by, by Robinson. And the one-point advantage over Cornell. First half starting to wind down to a minute. Dixon, who's among the Ivy League leaders in assists, and now be an Sarju offensive. Patel with yeah. the offensive foul. Uh, I think it's going to be against Kobe Dixon, actually, on the Another screen. Another illegal screen. Yeah, yeah. They're calling so. that a lot differently over the last couple of years, it, the, the screen for the shooter. Yeah, it's it's night and day. I mean, that was a move that, that Coach Donahue taught us. I mean, uh, you know, because the refs wouldn't call it, that you would kind of move with the uh, with the screen and uh, make it even more difficult for the defender. They, they've taken that basically out of the game. Slacker, who started the contest, number 11, back in the ball game. Barry wide open, hard off the back of the iron. Red do not have numbers off this missed shot. Differentials about 15 between their shot clock and the first half game clock. Adelican knocks it away from Dixon. Red cannot penetrate. Patel with seven to shoot. Stops, pops, no. And the rebound slacker. Dartmouth the hold for one final look in this opening half. A late run giving them a one-point lead. The only question now what the score will be as we're down to five seconds. Barry off the dribble. Offensive foul when it was A.J. Broder from, from Penn as we were, we were talking, and, and, and those guys were the, uh, the Ivy Madness was, uh, was canceled. So it's been a long, long time. You're back on the court. Dolan with the fadeaway no at the buzzer. Red got a chance. Dolan had a strong at the end of the first half. Obviously, Cornell's going to make some adjustments. Yeah, Cornell absolutely will. I think they'll, they'll key in on, on Rye and Barry uh, and also need to talk more about Garrison Wade, who had a, a very good first half. Lineup, 
which opened the game for both clubs. The Green have the first trip down the floor offensively as Wade will kick it out to Rye. Up top, Slackert stops, pops, buries a three. His first one was taken away due to a shot clock violation, but Wesley Slackert gives Dartmouth their largest lead of the game, but Cornell answers back with a power move in the post, points 10 and 11 for the brilliant sophomore Chris Manning. Yeah, great move there by uh, by Chris Manning. We've talked about you know, how many different ways he can score. I think the most effective for him right now is uh, is inside. Used his body well, used his strength to be able to even just get that ball up towards the rim, let alone make it. Foul against Wade, so th- just under 30 seconds into the half. Both clubs get baskets. Manning cannot complete the three-point play, and Wade rips the rebound down. Two-point game. As the Green with their second trip on the offensive side of the floor, Ogbu did not see a lot of minutes start of the game. Will catch it in the block. Red are more active defensively, and there's the first turnover of the half, the 10th overall. Forced by Cornell. Tries to hit Dolan. Right idea down low, but heads up was Brendan Barry to knock it out of bounds. So the Red forcing their first turnover. Incidentally, Chris Mann in the first double figure scorer for either club with 11 for Cornell. Yeah, Cornell absolutely trying to, to, to force those turnovers. That's a big part of what they do is to get uh, quick buckets. And we'll see if that gets Keller Boothby uh, going. Yeah, he, he's a uh, nice backdoor layup. That's something he's probably going to be able to take advantage of as teams key more and more on his three-point shooting. Thus, we are tied at 37. Can Slackard break the tie? No. Red again will break in transition. Manning with a power dribble ball got poked away by Ogbu. Offensive foul. So Boothby had the layup on the offensive end of the floor. Hustled back defensively and draws the player control foul on Garrison Wade. Again, that's a potential two-point basket for Dartmouth. Taken away by Cornell's charge. Picked up by Keller Boothby. Yeah, and that's going to be the second foul there against Garrison Wade. We'll, we'll watch that foul situation as, as it progresses for uh, for both teams. For Dartmouth, Wade, Barry, and Rye being, uh, being the key guys. Backdoor cut. Dolan will finish for Cornell. So the Red with a run of their own now to recapture the lead at 39-37. to 37. Wade working against Manning. That's a great individual matchup. As Barry will catch it, he'll stop, he'll pop, barely nick the rim. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by the... Nick of the rim on the shot by Brendan Barry, who's now two of six from three and three of eight from the field. In his last two games against Cornell, he was only averaging seven points a game on 30% shooting, and that was three years ago. So it's been a while since he's been to Ithaca, Brendan Barry. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, we all know what he can do if he gets any space. Uh, Cornell has done a very good job uh, on him defensively, and, you know, that's going to be a key as he picks up another foul there. Three fresh subs for Cornell. You referenced the bench. Isaiah Gray, Dean Knoll, and Sean Hansen. The two sophomores and the senior respectively come in. And now Dartmouth getting into early team foul trouble again. It didn't eventually hurt them in the first half when they picked up five early ones. They're up to three now. And we are not even two and a half minutes into the second half. Boothby, who made his first basket earlier in this half on a driving layup. We'll get it off to Hansen. Gray, Hansen, Patel. Shot clock down to three. Gray looks at the clock. He'll get it off. He'll stop shooting. No, ball is tipped around. Taken by Patel. Dribbled inside. Ball got knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Dartmouth. Terrific hustle by Sarju Patel as Dartmouth has forced Cornell down to one second on their shot clock. Uh, they're going to get a reset, though, now back to, uh, to to 19 seconds. So good break there uh, for Cornell. It was hard to see who it went off on, but the uh, officials give it to Cornell. And Kristoyak, who went to the bench late in the half with three fouls, he's back on the floor here in the second half of the green. Boothby. No. 
Sandberg, Max Sandberg into the game. Now the shot clock again down under five seconds. Noel with one second to shoot, hard and long, and the rebound, Rye. Here come the Greens. Two to tie, three to take the lead. It's a two-point basketball game in this Ivy League opener here at Newman Arena in Ithaca, New York, Cornell University campus. For Stoyak, off to Robinson. Robinson can't get through the pressure. Rye, they leave him alone. He's wide open, misses a left side three. Red claim the glass and will come down left to right in the second half, 3.30 in. Sandberg fakes the three, strong drive to the basket. Rye forced that shot to go wide. Don't know if he got a piece of it. Rye in transition with a two on one. Kristoviak goes up, got blocked. Follow up, layup, don't count it. Got blocked. Noel got a piece of the ball, Eric. Forced to jump ball, and on the alternate arrow, it goes back to Cornell as the follow-up layup attempt from the left side was put home by Dartmouth prior to the jump ball. Yeah, great hustle there by Cornell. One of those situations, two on one. You're expecting the Big Green to score the vast majority of the time, but credit Cornell for not giving up. Again, that's what we talked about. Brian uh, Earl plays a lot of guys. He expects full effort. That includes getting back uh, both trans in transition defensively. Cornell looking to attack the green zone. Grace spinning inside with a beautiful pirouette. Lays it up and in. Isaiah Gray. Six quality points off the bench and a four-point lead for Cornell after Dartmouth had got a four-point lead of their own. at 41-37, four and a half into our second half in Ithaca. Kristoyak again playing with the three fouls. Slacker. Rye. Evan Williams, double number zero into the game. Oh, a pivot by Rye, a little floater for the Canadian for two points. Aaron Rye, first double figure score for the visitors. Gray for Cornell, off the window on the layup, counted in a foul. Really using his body, taking it to, uh, taking it to the hoop, being aggressive, and here rewarded with a free throw. So nine points off the bench for Isaiah Gray. We also reference Cornell's potent bench scoring, averaging 43 points out of their bench. Bench depleted just a bit today due to the numbers on both teams. Again, a combined 15 players, but it hasn't affected the intensity or the effort. Coach Eric Taylor here, or Captain Eric Taylor, knows <laughs> he played in many an Ivy League battle over his four years with the Big Red. As Barry is hawked defensively, Guy Raglan Jr., number 21, back into the game for Cornell here in the second half. And as the red penetrate. It's going to be a uh, foul against Greg Dolan there. Yeah, he's doing a nice job defensively. A little bit too much uh, hand check for the right, referee's liking. Romeo Myrtle, his first appearance of the second half, number 20, is into the game for the green off the media timeout. Five-point deficit. At one point early here in the second half, Dartmouth is up four. Myrtle into the double team. Kick out Robinson, deep left baseline, buries a three. Isaiah Robinson. He's played in just eight games entering this afternoon, averaging seven minutes, but the sophomore from Montclair, New Jersey, has buried two triples off the bench, and it's back to a two-point game. Two-point game and a 1-2-2 uh, full-court press here from, uh, from Dartmouth. Make Cornell use a few minutes, seconds off their clock. Raglan Jr., Williams, Manning, Trying to post up down low, the combination of uh, Isaiah Robinson and Adelican, one of those two, Robinson commits the foul. So like the first half, Eric, Dartmouth picked up five team fouls very quickly in 547 into the second half. They're already at five here, the first against Robinson. Yeah, again, you know, different styles of play. We talked about a lot of the similarities, uh, but there are some differences, one of which is is the Chris Manning types, taking it really hard to the hoop. Dartmouth doesn't have quite as many of those personalities, those basketball players, as Cornell does. Manning with the team in game high, 13 points. He has just been too powerful for Dartmouth down low. Rye off to Williams or Robinson. Nice defensive work by Dean Noll, providing a defense against the penetration as both teams have used a lot of shot clock today because 
They have tape on both the clubs. They guard you harder in league play. And as Ride penetrated inside, there'll be a foul picked up by Cornell. I'm sorry. It was against Cornell as Rye made the penetration. Team foul number two and individual foul number three on Chris Mann. And he'll go to the bench with 13 points. To my point, Eric, when you see non-league games, teams don't watch as much film on a non-league opponent. In this league, everybody knows everybody, as you can tell by the defensive pressure this afternoon, as Adelican swoops inside for a layup off the inbounds. Yeah, that's exactly right, Barry. I mean, it very much becomes a chess match, particularly within the, uh, the Ivy League, within league play. Everybody starts to know everybody. You get those, uh, you get those shots, uh, you get those, those game tapes, um, and, and coaches are, are, are very good about talking and understanding uh, what, other, uh, what the various tendencies are of players. Nice move by Guy Raglan Jr. Sweeping inside for a right-handed shot. Four-point Cornell lead. Seven minutes into the second half of this Ivy League opener. Deep at the baseline, Merthel. Call him Romeo. He drains a baseline three-point shot. It's down to a one-point game with 12.54 in the second half. Red thought there was a dead ball timeout. They all went to the bench. <laughs> Keller Boothy was the only player left for Cornell. He's pointing underneath the basket. He says, get back, get back. Yeah, just uh, just the net got caught up there. But a beautiful shot over the arch-stretched arms of Guy Raglan Jr. And Myrtle to answer for the uh, green. Raglan Jr. fakes the three, drives inside, layup, no, foul, yes. Robinson will pick up the foul. He tried to get the charge on Guy Raglan Jr. We've talked about it before, Eric. Not just a three-point shooter. Today, this is the second or third time he has put the ball on the deck and driven to the hole. But uh, uh, it agreed, and that's what opened it up was his three-point shooting. He was able to come off of that. You know, Dartmouth knows. They've been schooled. We talk about the chess matches that, that are Ivy League basketball games. They know not to give Guy a three-pointer, particularly a three-pointer at the top of the key. So he uses that to his advantage with a quick pump fake and takes it to the hoop. Raglan Jr. with his sixth point off the bench. Dialed up four Wednesday night at the Dome against Syracuse. And he's just one of these kids who you watch him. He's got no facial expression of jitters. He missed the second. So it stays at six points. But he's got ice water in the veins, as the expression goes, for a freshman. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As we talked about, uh, first Ivy League game for 11 of the uh, Cornell players out there. And uh, a new experience, but uh, it's still basketball. And uh, everybody has handled themselves well. Wade, number 22, is back on the floor as a Delican muscles inside, up and off the window. Dame Adelican, he's got eight off the bench. So Robinson and Adelican at 14 off the bench for the green on the other end. Power drive left baseline. Count it for Dean Knoll for points six and seven. We see on the replay, not the quickest on the dribble, but as a continuation, he got hit. He went to the basket, softly laid it up off the glass. Seven points off the bench now for Dean Knoll. Senior from Medford, New Jersey, his 54th game in a Cornell uniform. Yeah, nice take by, uh, by Dean Knoll there, and uh, the third foul now for, uh, for Isaiah Robinson. Eight points for Dean Knoll, went to Shawnee High in New Jersey, the same high school as his sixth-year coach, Brian Earl. Yeah, amazing uh, the records that he broke when uh, Brian Earl and Dan Earl came before you. Robinson trapped by the pressure, Cornell D. Off to Wade. They lock him off on the drive. Cornell picking up their defensive intensity. Wade with no shot. Adelican on the elbow. And it's knocked out of bounds. Red one. Dartmouth 6 of 10 from the floor over the first 8 plus minutes. 60%, 3 out of 5 from 3. Cornell at 72%, Eric Taylor. 8 of 11 from the field. And a 3 point lead off the timeout for the home club. Yeah, very impressive shooting in the second half uh, for Cornell. It's uh, it's over 70 percent, 60 percent from uh, from Dartmouth thus far. That rebound for Cornell, their 20th team rebound. So both teams equal in the rebounding war. And again, a three-point lead for the home club as Dixon got the ball poked away. 
reached into a double team and trying to go for the ball. He hit one of the Dartmouth players. So the second individual foul against Kobe Dixon. Team foul number three against Cornell. Dartmouth is already in the bonus defensively, so Cornell offensively will be in a one and one until it hits 10 team fouls. Yeah, definitely an advantage for Cornell, as we talked about uh, two players on the on the Dartmouth uh, roster with, with three fouls and a number with two. We've had eight lead changes in this contested opener here on ESPN+. Plus. Catch and shoot, way deep left baseline, no. A delicate tips, but Boothby. Manning threw it away. That is turnover number eight against Cornell. They throw it down the floor in transition. The Red got back, almost forced to turn over their own. My correction is Boothby. That's our one mulligan a game, and his Rye caught the ball deep at the far bench side of the floor. He got bumped into, and Chris Manning picks up what should be his fourth individual foul, fourth team foul against Cornell. So Manon will go to the bench with 10.42 remaining in the second half of a three-point Cornell lead. Three to tie it, two to cut it to a one-point game. And Rye, who's really led the senior charge along with Brendan Barry, and now Cornell quickly picks up back-to-back fouls team-wise. And this one's against Kobe Dixon. So yeah. two of the last three fouls have been against the senior tri-captain big man. A Dulican off the inbounds, one dribble and a two-hand throwdown for Dame Adulican. This is his breakout party game here in Ithaca, New York. As they throw it down low, catch and layup, left side counted for Dean Knoll. Red give you very little time to get settled defensively, Eric. That time of possession, the quickest in Division One, and Knoll again finishes. Yeah, you can't uh, you can't spend time high fiving your teammates when you make a basket against the big red. You've got to be ready to get back defensively. Yeah, as I said, even on a made one, they're so so quick at getting that ball out. So prolific off the dribble this afternoon has been Aaron Rye, the fifth year senior for Dartmouth. Took it on the bounce, and in the span of just about two minutes, Kobe Dixon has picked up three fouls for Cornell. We referenced Dartmouth's in team foul trouble. Dixon has four, Eric. Manon's got Deborah. four, and Cornell's got 16 fouls. And, and Isaiah, guy is get, Isaiah Gray has three. Um, so as we, we talked about Cornell with not as many team fouls, but all of a sudden it, it, it went up to six quickly and four on two key players. They hedge out on Slackert. Can't penetrate. Rye, who's been terrific on penetration, gives it up in the middle. Jumper, Ogabu, no. And the rebound, yes, to Dean Knoll. He's played a great two-way floor game for Cornell this afternoon in his Ivy League opener. As Sandberg muscles into the post, no. You mentioned Gray. Poked at. Knocked out of bounds off the hand of Isaiah Gray. Terrific one-on-one defense for Garrison Wade. Gray wanted the reach-in foul. He, he absolutely did, and uh, Cornell fans did as well. But I thought it was good defense by Gray, and that's a big stop because, uh, excuse me, that was good defense by Wade. Gray had been doing a great job getting to the basket and, and scoring against the big green. You referenced this before, the foul trouble for Cornell and Isaiah Gray. Let's see if he goes to the bench as he picks up a costly fourth foul with 9-19 in the game. This is where having a deep bench helps you particularly in league play, but it is now the bonus situation for both clubs. The seventh team foul and a one and one for Brendan Barry, who only hits on 94% of his free throws. (laughs) Yeah, he is one of those uh, epically good uh, free throw shooters, and uh, he's even immune, at least on the first one, to the uh, announcer's jinx. Came in with 1,069 total points. But 959 have been in a Dartmouth uniform, and he has two more now. He becomes the third double-figure scorer of the afternoon for the Green. And a one-point basketball game in this Ivy League opener for you on ESPN+. Plus. The Green and the Red here in Ithaca, New York. Almost at the nine-minute mark. Sandberg, top of the zone. Hansen has been quiet today. Noel, who has stated, has played a great floor game, particularly on penetration. The right side drive, Dean Noel. 
with 12 points now to lead Cornell, a big basket, still a one possession game. And it's been an exciting basketball, excuse me, exciting basketball game both ways. You know, other than early in the first half, middle of the first half, neither of these teams have gotten out to much of a lead. Physicality down low as both Hanson and Slackard hit the deck. And it's going to be a one and one for Dartmouth as Sean Hanson is the individual player charged with the foul against Cornell. So Slackard making his 13th career start in his 71st game for the green at the line. Can't finish the front end of the one and one. Here comes Noel. He's not going to beat you with his quickness, but he's so gritty and tenacious at both ends of the floor. As two subs come to the scorer table, one for each side as we're approaching eight minutes in regulation. Noel off the dribble. Is it a nice continuation? Move. Yes. The floater counted in a rest. He has a knack for finding the hoop, as you see right there. Slackered on the foul. Noel with the three-point play. 15 points for Dean Noel. Season high was 12 against Coppin State. This is a personal best in Ivy League play for Dean Noel. And just like that, a one-point game expands to six. Yeah, Approaching eight minutes. This is going to be big possessions here for Dartmouth. Can Cornell keep this momentum going, or will Dartmouth have the answer? Ogbu to Rye. He likes the dribble. Penetration. Kick it to Ogbu. He drives inside. Leaps up in the air. Offensive foul. Picking up late in Ivy League basketball game. March of 2020. <laughs> Close to two years removed, but they are... Going head-to-head, -head, Eric, with uh, just under eight minutes to go in regulation. Cornell's hit 78% of their shots here in the second half, 11 of 14. Dartmouth hit 50%. They've hit 7 of 14 attempts. Yeah, absolutely been a shooting exposition, uh, exhibition so far in the second half. Shot clock winding down. Sandberg, pirouette in the post, goes up, blocked by Wade. Follow-up, Evan Williams! With his first basket of the game, and a timely time to get it, the sophomore from Plano East High School in Murphy, Texas. 61-53, the lead widens off this media timeout. Barry with a right to left side drive, points 11 and 12 for Brendan Barry. Six point basketball game. Boy, these clubs really move defensively and offensively. Darvis got back, is. Cornell takes so little time to get down the floor and underneath a Dartmouth play. This year with, with COVID and whatnot, there's seven teams that could really get to that, that top four. It's going to be hard to see Columbia, at least the way they're playing right now, turn it up and make it into, uh, into to Ivy Madness. But the rest of them are largely evenly matched, and uh, you know, we'll see how it, how it plays out as the season goes on. Two young coaches trying to break into that top four to get to the postseason Ivy League tournament, which is a change. As the Ivy League tournament's been in play, what now? This is going into its seventh year, I believe. And Guy Raglan Jr. with eight points off the bench. 63-55, the red. Game clock under seven minutes in this league opener. Hotly contested as expected. Murphle back in the game, number 20 for the green. Barry, you referenced him off the timeout. Adelican using that big frame inside, missed it. The rebound ripped down by Raglan Jr., got tied up by Aaron Rye. Heads up play by the senior, tying up the freshman in the alternate arrow. Fortunate it'll stay Dartmouth's way. That's what you talked about. You used tenacity uh, earlier when describing Dartmouth. I think that's a great illustration of it right there. Aaron Rod giving up some inches to Guy Raglan, but uh, but playing hard and able to uh, to get that jump ball and keep Dartmouth's possession. Red scrapping their way defensively. They're all over the green as Merthel got trapped at the baseline. Adelicum kick out Rye. High arch. Bury it. Aaron Rye with a two-point jump shot. They rule it a two-point shot. 
I thought it was going to be a three. Yeah, it's a three to get them to uh, to 58. So 13 for Rye. Red miss a head of the circle shot of their own. They'll come down into the front court in transition, Dartmouth. A delicate off the window, roll around and out. No foul, yes, Ragland Jr. Not much known about Dame Adulican coming in. My correction, Patel on the foul, but there is Rye leading the break, made the right pass, and Adelican wanted to go up off the glass, got fouled by Sarju Patel, and the first of two goes down for this junior from Gastonia, North Carolina. You know I'm a basketball historian and junkie when it comes <laughs> to hometowns. Gastonia, the I believe the hometown of James Worthy, the great Los Angeles um. Laker great along with Eric Sleepy Floyd, who played a number of years. The Georgetown great played for the Golden State Warriors, among many clubs. But back to the college game. 12 points for Adelican off the bench, and it's back to a one-possession game. Cornell and Dartmouth here on ESPN. Dartmouth wanted the drag of the pivot foot. Boothby shoots his first three-point attempt of the game. He missed it. Rebound green. Here comes Wade off to ride. Two to cut it to a one-point game. Three to knot us up. Barry off the dribble. Kick to the corner for the tie. Tie ball game. Garrison Wade. His second three of the afternoon. And just like that, Eric, our third tie of the game. We approach five minutes in regulation. Now a traveling violation. Dartmouth wanted it on the last possession. Did not get it. They get it this time. A costly turnover, which unofficially is the 11th of the afternoon against the Big Red. Exactly right, Barry. And it's a 8-0 run, a 10-2 run for, for Dartmouth here over the last couple of minutes. You know, tenacious continues to be a word that describes them well. They've come up to, uh, to Ithaca, New York, and absolutely come to continue to fight. Deadlocked at 63. Who will break it? Now we get that screen, that offensive foul as Barry try to rub his player off the screen. Yes, yeah, so that's going to go and against Garrison, uh, Wade. Garrison Wade. Exactly right, Barry, and uh, that'll be his third personal foul. But because it's player control, no free throws will be shot. Tied at 63. Under five to go here in Ithaca, New York in regulation. The league opener for both of these clubs on ESPN+. Plus. Noel, who's been terrific. Stopped on the penetration. Manon playing with the four fouls. Has it up top. Shot clock under five. Manon takes the contract. Banks it up. No. Follows no. Rebound of Dulican right before the shot clock went off. Transition for the green. Driving is Myrtle. Missed the left side layup. They let him play. There was some physical play on that left side drive. Manon will stop. He'll pop and he'll drop. The sophomore with his second three ball in Ivy League play, and what a time to get it. 16 for Manning and a three-point lead for Cornell. Four minutes to play in regulation here at Newman and Ithaca. Yeah, big shot by Manning. Very typical of Cornell. Take it into transition. If there's an open three, even if it's early in the shot clock, they're putting it up. Merthel made the right play. Try to hit the bounce to a delicate underneath. Red Muss. Three ties, eight lead changes. Both teams shooting 50% or better for the game. Cornell in the second half still at 65% shooting. As off the uh, inbounds, Dartmouth with under 10 seconds to shoot. This is who you want with the ball. Barry with three, with two, will force it up under pressure. He had to, he missed it. Gray in transition for Cornell, muscling his way from the right. He took an ill-advised shot and uh, in transition they get back defensively and kick the ball out of bounds easy for us to say forcing a shot but i think the momentum and the adrenaline that's pumping through these kids veins <laughs> is played out particularly with isaiah gray going one on three on the offensive rebound and defensive defensive stop right i mean it's uh, it's a byproduct of the system that brian earl plays and that they go up and down sometimes you're going to go up and down a little bit too fast probably the case there but again Cornell will get back defensively and uh, force Dartmouth into a tough shot a delicate out of the post away keep in mind the next foul against Cornell will be their 10th deep in the corner Myrtle shot was blocked by Manning not only was it blocked it's a shot clock violation so Chris Manning 
buries the go-ahead three on offense and makes the key block on defense for Cornell. Yeah, Chris Manning continuing to play well. Still playing pretty smart with those fouls. Didn't take a lot of risk to uh, block that shot. Game clock under three minutes. Backdoor cut. Boothby went inside. Arjun Patel was there defensively. Boothby hit the deck. No foul. And on the other end, the 10th team foul now going to be picked up by Cornell. So it'll be an automatic two-shot foul coming up as Arjun Rye will go to the free throw line. Manon with the foul. He will foul out of the contest with 245 in regulation. Eric, that's a huge loss for Cornell. Manon goes to the bench with a team and game high, 16 points. Exactly right, Barry. And probably with Nazir Williams out, Cornell's best on-ball defender. So that's a big loss for Cornell uh, to have to play without him for the last two minutes and 45 seconds. And Arjun Aaron Rye with his first of two. Costly miss. One out of two for him. He's got 15, now 16 points. Approaching 230. One possession game. Noel back in. Backdoor cut. Foul, Murthel against the drive by Sarju Patel. My correction before, it's Aaron Rye. I was he saying Arjun. Right. So, again, we got to get used to the names for the Ivy League opener, but the foul underneath committed by Murthel, the freshman from Sweden. So it'll be an automatic two shots for this tri-captain, this transfer from VMI, Sarju Patel. Give him six on the afternoon. Play for Brian Earl's brother, Dan, at VMI for two seasons for 59 games and then transferred to Ithaca, New York. A absolutely, and he's had uh, you know, a nice start to his career. Relatively, uh, relatively quiet tonight with, with five points, but a big one right there uh, and another big opportunity here with this free throw. This would make it a two-possession contest. and <laughs> Nothing but net for Patel. Daleville, Virginia. Substitutions for both clubs. Back in for Dartmouth. He's had a long stay on the bench. He started the ball game. The senior guard, Wes Slacker, will bring it into the front court as the game clock winds down to just over two minutes and a four-point lead for Cornell. Rye trying to muscle his way inside, up and under move. Little fade away with the little baby hook shot. Aaron Rye. By Aaron Rye, the fifth year senior forward for Dartmouth. Mark Montero, by the way, of Orangeville Prep. He is the leading scorer in the game now with 18 points. Yeah, he's done a, a, a nice job, as you talked about. Really knows how to use his body, fundamentally sound. He's stepped up in the second half, uh, as, as a number of the Dartmouth players have. Red will work the shot clock a bit as Dartmouth has played zone the entire game against Cornell. Looking to prevent the backdoor cut. No! Says, you know what? We can't get backdoor cuts, but we can get three-pointers. And Dean Noel matches Rye with 18 points. Huge basket for the Red. A delicate in the lane. He'll post up, much like Rye, get the shooter's roll. Dane Adelican. Adds to his career best. He's got 14 off the pine. And as we approach a minute, it's still a one-possession game here on ESPN+. Plus. Noel got the ball knocked away off to Boothby. Boothby. Dixon. Dixon, the leading assist man for Cornell, coming in. Here's Noel again with the drive to the basket. No. Rebound, Barry. Comes down two on two. Barry, right side of the floor. Gets it off to Wade. Two to... Two to... Cut it to a one-point game. Three to not us up. 50 seconds in regulation. 15 shot clock winding down. Rye into the post. Hooks it off a delicate. Swoops by his man. Missed the layup. He missed it under pressure. Red with the rebound. Patel speeding down. Right side, Noel. Timeout, Red. They had a terrific look. Successful defensively. 36.4 in the game. Noel fouled by Barry. So they let about three and a half seconds go off the clock and put a pretty good senior free throw shooter at the free throw line. That's what you want, Cornell. You want an upperclassman at the line who's been in these situations before. 
This might be the best Ivy League game of Dean Knoll's career with the 18 points right now and looking to make it more than a possession. 19 points for Dean Knoll. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that was... Now it's two possessions. Right, it was, it's, it's two possessions now for sure. I mean, that looked... It wasn't clear to me if they were trying to foul or not. I, I, I maintain that not following and trying to play defense for those 25 seconds was the, uh, the best expected value for, for Dartmouth. Ice water in the veins for Gene Knoll. Continues to add to his Ivy League career best. 20 points for him. And now a five-point spread as they get it over midcourt. Dartmouth takes a timeout. It, it, it's fatigued a team on, on Saturday night. But, uh, you know, interesting change. And, and, again, we should see how it all, all plays out this year. They lob it in. Intended for Rye. Taken away by Williams. He's fouled in the backcourt. And with the bonus at 10 for both teams, automatic two shots for Evan Williams with just under 29 seconds remaining in this Ivy League opener, or as we like to use the phrase with the three-point shot, regulation. We've seen crazier finishes <laughs> in college basketball than this. Evan Williams did not get a lot of minutes prior to this afternoon on the floor for Cornell. As you take a look at the Cornell upcoming schedule, Williams with his third point of the day. The trip to the P's, Philadelphia next Friday for Cornell, Saturday at Jadwin Gym against Princeton, Brian Earl's alma mater. Then back home for a, no, back to New England for Yale the following week, followed by Columbia and Harvard. Money foul shots for Evan Williams. Four points off the bench for him. Red will put full court pressure on the green as they lob it in to Isaiah Robinson. Kick it to the corner. Barry with the head fake. Wanted the foul. Shoots the three. No. Ball's tipped around, tipped around. Dolan with the tip out. Dolan with the breakout. Dolan with the coast-to-coast -coast layup. That should do it. Greg Dolan. Personifying the Big Red this afternoon, hustle at both ends of the floor. On the other end, Garrison Wade says, wait a minute, Mr. Announcer, I'm going to bury a three ball. To steal off the inbounds, you have to foul immediately. Yeah, that sounds like the right strategy. Cornell will be able to run the sideline. They love that pass in when they're able to, uh, to do that. The pass out of bounds, out of bounds. As you saw, they, they let... 1.9 seconds off uh, on the on the game clock. Again, not easy to come back from six points with uh, with 10 seconds, but they make it even more difficult now with only 8.1. Wade on the foul. That's his fourth, as you stated, he down to eight seconds in the game. And back to the free throw line once again for Cornell is Patel. This is 12th start at Cornell. And his eighth point of the afternoon. Red have been, as the expression goes, money at the free throw line coming down the stretch. That's what coaches want to see. How do you close out games? Brian Earl's finding something about his young team this afternoon. Uh, absolutely, Barry. And it's 76% for the, for the game for Cornell uh, from that charity stripe. And that's been huge. They've had, uh, they're into the bonus in both the first half and the second half relatively early. And they took advantage of those facts. Eight point game. Seconds winding down, Rye will hoist off the rim. Fitting at the rebound goes to a senior in Dean Null, and Cornell holds on in this Ivy League 